In Paris, Spencer takes Trina out to a romantic restaurant for dinner. Trina is enchanted with Paris but wants to know what else he's planning for tonight. He refuses to spoil the surprise. Spencer sees black gold caviar on the menu and remembers begging his dad to try it as a kid. He finally got to try it and loved it, but later learned it was just black beans. He hopes Ace gets to have memories like that. Talk turns back to Spencer's plans for the evening, and he offers to tell Trina, but she doesn't want to ruin the surprise after all. She asks what he'll be doing while she's in class. He says he wants to try and figure out what his passion is, so he's going to do some exploring. He is sorry he wasted so much time when he was here before plotting against his father and Ava with Esme. He's also sorry he dragged her into such messes as she didn't deserve it. But she says he didn't either. He says she makes him want to be a better person. After dinner, Spencer leads Trina to the rest of their surprise and they head outside. She can't believe this is all happening. They walk off and Esma emerges and follows them in Toronto, Dent and Chase, along with a Toronto cop, knock on the apartment door. Maggie opens her door and recognizes Dante. Dante asks if they can come in and talk, and she invites them in. Maggie explains she's been working here in Toronto since they last saw one another in Ireland, and things are quiet and she'd like to keep them that way. Dante doesn't want to cause trouble and explains they are just looking for Esme. Maggie says they are looking in the wrong place, as she has no idea where Esme is and she hasn't seen her in years. Maggie admits she wrote Esme months ago, but she never heard back. Dante says they have a letter from her inviting Esme to visit. Maggie suggests they get the handwriting authenticated, as she wrote no such thing. After searching the place, Chase confirms there is no evidence Esme has been there. Dante and Chase realize they've been played, and Dante asks Maggie if she knows where Esme would go. She doesn't know, and she tried to sway her to a better path years ago, but she was set on reuniting with her family. Dante thinks that might be the key. Dante and Chase step out, and Dante believes Esme may be going after Ace. Dante decides to give Laura a call. At G8, Laura sits by Kevin's bedside, but he's asleep again. She missed when he woke up, and a nurse tells Portia that Kevin has been in and out. Eventually, Kevin comes too, and Portia asks him basic questions to make sure he's okay. Laura asks who did this to him, and he admits it was Esme. Laura says they assumed it was her, and Esme has fled, but Dant and Chase are following a lead on her to Toronto. Laura asks if he has an idea why she attacked him. He says they were talking, and he thought he was getting through to her, and then everything went black. Portia leaves them, and Laura tells Kevin how scared she was when she found him on the floor of Alex's office. He jokes he didn't survive Ryan just to be done in by his daughter. Laura is upset about Esma, and she thought she could turn her life around. But then she got her memory back. Laura feels Esma didn't have a chance to reconcile her two identities before Nicholas took Ace, pushing her over the edge. Kevin doesn't think Esma would go to Toronto, and the whole thing feels off to him. He feels something happened in Alex's office that he can't recall. A detective comes to talk to Kevin about what he remembers. He recalls when he first walked into Alex's office, Esma was on the laptop, and had the invader's corporate card in her hand. Laura decides to call Alexis. At the courthouse, Alexis arrives late, and Tracy appears too. Sam is chasing down more information, and Alexis learns that Muldoon saw an oncologist before coming to see Finn. Alexis asks how an oncologist missed late-stage cancer. Gregory says, he didn't. Alexis is brought up to speed on the theory Muldoon set Finn up. Liz asks if this is enough for the judge to throw out the case. Tracy thinks they should put Muldoon's wife back on the stand, reveal the fraud claim, and make her crack. Martin says without proof, the wife knew then it would be a risk. Tracy says if the accusation is out there in the public record then GA's lawyers can run with it. Gregory decides Tracy isn't helping and suggests they grab some water. Finn asks Martin what would happen to Mrs. Muldoon if knew about the fraud and he says she'd be charged with jail time. Liz says they still need to find out if she was in on the fraud. Martin looks over at Diane and the wife and gets an idea. In the hall, Mrs. Muldoon cries to Diane that she has no money to pay for her children's college, let alone care if they don't win this lawsuit. Martin appears and asks to speak to Diane alone. Naturally, Diane tells Muldoon's Mrs. Wife Muldoon heads into not court and confronts that. Finn and says if he had a shred of decency, then he'd plead guilty now. Alexis says she shouldn't be engaging Finn, but he wants to hear what she has to say. Alexis excuses herself when she gets a text from Laura, 
and Finn tells Mrs. Muldoon that he advised her husband to seek further treatment and he didn't. She says that isn't like her husband, he would do anything not to leave them, he'd do anything for his family, which is why he was the one who pushed them to sue. She says it's so wrong for a man to die so young, and Finn agrees. Diane and Martin return to court, and Diane quickly pulls her client away from Finn. Gregory and Tracy return too, and they ask what happened. Finn says the wife is in pain, and Martin says Diane didn't recognize the oncologist's name when he said he was calling them to the stand. Finn and Liz both believe Mrs. Muldoon had nothing to do with the fraud. Finn doesn't want to see Mrs. Muldoon go to prison for fraud as she's all her kids have, but Tracy says he needs to think about his kid. Liz pulls Finn aside and says he needs to consider using the fraud claim, but Finn doesn't know if it will help to throw a grieving widow under the bus. He knows in the end, someone is getting hurt. Dean asks Mrs. Muldoon if she knows a Dr. Powell, but she doesn't. Meanwhile, Martin asks Finn what he wants to do. Finn hates the idea that Mrs. Muldoon could go to prison, but Martin says he could lose everything if they don't pursue this. In the hall, Tracy grabs Mrs. Muldoon to have a word. Back at GH, Stella finds Curtis at his PT appointment. The therapist Ben excuses himself, and Curtis says she doesn't need to check up on him. She says, too late, I've been doing it your whole life. Curtis says he just wants to assess how the surgery went, and Stella calls him stubborn. Ben the therapist returns, and she asks him if it is dangerous for Curtis to try and stand so quickly after surgery. Ben says it will be safe between him and the parallel bars. Curtis is able to use his arms to pull himself up, but he struggles to stand on his own and collapses back into his chair. He's troubled and says he's done for the day. Stella asks Ben for a moment, and Curtis thinks Stella it was right not to try and stand so soon. Stella asks why he thought it would work on the first try. Curtis admits he has renewed hope after the procedure and wants to move forward. She says he will, but it will be a slow road and he'll have to take it one effort at a time. Portia arrives and lets Stella and Curtis know that Kevin is awake and getting better. She asks where Ben is and if the session is over. Stella asks Curtis if it is. He says he's taking a break and asks Stella to bring back Ben. She leaves and Portia asks what she missed. He says he pushed too hard and bruised his ego. He asks about Esmond and Portia hopes she's found and put in jail as she never wants to hear about her again. Later Ben returns to finish the session with Curtis. Afterward, Stella calls today's workout the first step towards a first step. Curtis swears he will walk in by the time Trina is home. Back in Kevin's room, Dante calls Laura and tells her that Toronto has been a dead end. He thinks Esma may be going after Nicholas and Ace. Laura believes they have a new lead, and Alexis arrives and says she has a list of the charges made on the corporate card and finds something shocking. Esma booked a ticket to Paris, and Laura realizes that Esma is going after Spencer and Trina. On the next general hospital, Trina can't believe Spencer's surprise. Laura tells Portia and Curtis they need to know something. In court, Martin tells Finn they are going forward as planned with this new theory. Tracy tells Muldoon's wife that she's about to get an education. In Pentonville, Anna tells Jordan she wants to know why Brennan is playing games. On the island, Sonny tells Ava and Dex, times change and so do threats. In Paris, Esmond pulls a syringe out of her back.